Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the podcast. We have a, uh, a special show today, one of, uh, one of my, my most, uh, I, I don't want to say, important uh, mentors, not to, to belittle anybody else or minimize anybody else, but this uh, professionally, this guy's done more for me than, than just about anybody else and uh, taught me pretty much everything I know about the business that I've been able to have some success in, and this is my good friend Marvin Williams. Yeah, welcome, my friend. Welcome. Good, good morning. Good morning. It's nice to get you here. You know, um, it, it's it's a little bit chillier here, I'm sure, than in Texas. And uh, I know you're <laughs> looking forward to getting back. You've been on the road for a while, but yeah. um, Nick and I, we've been Nick. Nick's probably asked me at least a dozen times, "When are we going to get Marvin? When are we going to get Marvin?" Sure. So we had you in town. We wanted to take advantage of that for for a few minutes to have a conversation. So, Marv, tell tell you know everybody that, that watches the show, that follows us, and has has heard your name mentioned many times, and I'm sure they're curious <laughs> because you know not only myself but uh, most of the GPI folks that have been on you, your name's been dropped a few times. So, just give us a little bit of. And, if that could take an entire hour. I realize that. But give us the, the, uh, the elevator version of, of Marvin Williams. Ah, it's really straightforward. Um, uh, born in Los Angeles, 1948, long, long, long time ago. Uh, <laughs> mother's school teacher. Uh, father, natural father, was a lawyer. Um, uh, lived in Waco, Texas for a short while. At an HBCU, where my grandfather was the, the chancellor of uh, Paul Quinn College in Waco, okay. Texas, which is now in Dallas. And it's still uh, around. That's, that's, yeah, still that's around, around. Okay. doing very well. Um, with Cleveland, Ohio, my mother remarried uh, the guy who ran the NAACP in Cleveland, Ohio. Okay. Harold Williams, my dad. And, uh, and we lived there until I was 17. Um, lived through all the civil rights stuff of that period of time, which some of it was pretty funny, but most of it was pretty, pretty serious stuff. And your dad actually knew Dr. King. Very much. Very well. Yeah. So had had been at our house. It has, yeah. And Megar Evers and the whole the right. whole the whole, whole shooting match. That in itself is just fascinating history. Right. It is. You know, that's it is. a it is. it's it's amazing to me how, you know, we have people that are out here with us interacting with it sure. every day that are a direct link to and, and I guess the 60s and, you sure. know, that, that civil rights movement is recent history, sure. I guess, in the overall scheme of things. But, you know, we're 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 running out of the priceless resource. Like, you know, for example, World War II veterans. I sure. mean, you know, there there's gone. only a few left, That's you know, right. that, right. that connect to that was probably arguably the most important time in our country's history. Sure. Right. So I love the idea. And, and you had told me a story about how you came to be to go to Washington, D.C., right. your senior year of high school. Right. Yeah. My uh, Lyndon Johnson came out to Cleveland, Ohio uh, to speak at a Freedom Fund dinner. In NAACP, and my dad and he, my dad was the director of the executive director. By the time he got back home, dad said, we're moving to Washington because I'm going to uh, go work in the White House. And then he eventually became the first director of civil rights for what's called the Urban Mass Transportation Administration, mm -hmm. all the subways and buses and stuff. Um, and we moved my senior year and in, in, in junior year in high school. Oh, that was terrible. I was deeply in love with uh, a young, <laughs> young lady, and, and my football team wanted me <clears throat> to keep my size. My football team wanted me to right. keep, keep playing for them. But we moved. And <clears throat> culturally, it was an incredible, incredible shift. But sure. I went to probably one of the best places in the world. Go to school, Western High School, now called Duke Ellington School for the Arts. Okay. It's about third black, third white, and third uh, international. Uh, it's in Georgetown. <clears throat> okay. And the kids were rich, poor, all, all over the city. We we talk about it now in our reunions. That was the most integrated time of our lives. Mm -hmm. We all bet, yeah. respect each other. Right. Um, uh, uh, the head of the student body, who was Jewish, father owned a, who owned a uh, uh, gas station, uh, was in love and, and 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 dated Becky Smith, who was the, the daughter of a dentist, black daughter of a dentist, and <laughs> we just grew up that way. Went to college. Um, mm -hmm. And here's what happened. Every summer, I worked construction. This is what my whole thing is by where you are. We're talking. Sure. And uh, I really loved infrastructure, not just because of the hard work and the good money, but also because I kept seeing, I worked on the D.C. subway system, mm -hmm. how this was, in those days, how it's going to connect everything. I thought about infrastructure in terms of, my dad was working on civil rights. And this is while you were in college. College. <clears throat> every summer in college, once, one year in high school, underage, okay. underage, um, <laughs> but every year in college and then in law school. I worked in construction, and that really changed my life. I kept thinking, this is a place to be, mm -hmm. place to be. So went to Wesley University for four years in Middletown, Connecticut. I played football for two of those years. Uh, then had an eye injury, which was good because in long ways it got me to focus. Got into Yale Law School, 
great place. Uh, I can name drop in the Yale Law School. <laughs> Interesting times. Bill and Hillary were a year or two years ahead of me. Uh -huh. Clarence Thomas is in my class. Um, we never d agreed on anything, Clarence and I. So we, we still <laughs> that don't. doesn't surprise we, we me. <laughs> but the most important was I knew that I didn't want to be a lawyer. Um, how do you tell middle-class black parents that you're in law school, Yale Law School, you're not going to go? The dean said, go, enjoy yourself. Yeah. But it was about construction. So everything since then has been about infrastructure. Mm -hmm. All my entire career has been infrastructure. I was the- And your uh, undergrad at Wesleyan was like political science or something, right? It was history. History, history. okay. History, okay. I actually taught a course at Wesleyan. My senior year, I actually taught a course. Thought I might get a PhD in history. Taught a course with, a t with team taught with a professor, two of them, in fact, um, called Re Re uh, Reinventing Mary History. Think about it for a second. You know, I was on the board, as you know, on the board of the Smithsonian Museum mm -hmm. yes. of American History. And that came my, about my love for history. We'll talk, yeah. we'll talk a little history. But what happened was I was in infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And the first really important job was the um, 27 years old, uh, assistant general manager of the Boston Transit System okay. and for, for civil rights, small business. We're mm -hmm. inventing it going along the way. Yep. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that taught me a lot. I had to learn to work with contractors. I learned, Jim, the problem of if you give, we have rail warming. You know in Boston, you've, oh, seen, yeah, you've sure. just seen the T. And rail warming contracts, there was actually things you buy for the rail, warm the rail so they don't, you don't freeze yeah. over and stuff. Sure. And we wound up giving it to an Italian firm. I was head of the procurement, and the general manager <laughs> called me in and says, you don't give rail warming contracts to Italians. You give them to the Irish. <laughs> the Irish. So, we, so what we did is we did another contract and gave them both. You is know. That right? I learned, I learned a lot, but one of the big things I learned was urban America. Mm -hmm. Urban America was going through so many changes. Immigrants were moving to the cities, like right. blacks that moved to the cities <clears throat> from the south. Mm -hmm. um, white, middle class whites were fleeing the cities. Mm -hmm. So what you had left in the cities were whites who were better well off, okay? <clears throat> who were probably more liberal in some ways than some people who had left it. Sure. But getting projects done, the biggest single thing about infrastructure which could change, you know, where you put a subway line, where you're building buildings, where you build parks, um, um, changes how people live, mm -hmm. where they go to school, that kind of thing. Right, right. <clears throat> and the biggest thing about that was that um, that um, the public was the biggest single important factor in infrastructure development. Mm -hmm. infrastructure, infrastructure development, like the President's Bill last year, the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act, IJA, mm -hmm. puts people to work. Right. <clears throat> puts a lot of people to work. Absolutely, absolutely. It, it's an opportunity for young immigrants to get into business. Yeah. It's never saw more young Hispanic, more black kids in, in, in construction, mm -hmm. going to school in engineering. It, it, it changes the world. Absolutely. But at the it's, same it's time, been the greatest economic driver of our country. Absolutely. I mean, it really has. Yeah, absolutely. But at the same time, the community has to understand it, has to feel it, has to be part yeah. of it. Mm -hmm. And everything I've done since then, we'll talk about that a little bit later, I'll let you talk about this, is been tied to getting the public sector, the private sector, mm -hmm. and, and, and government right. to work together. Mm -hmm. that's, that's been almost my entire career in infrastructure. And well, I love and, it. And I think it, it, there's a, um, a, a local elected official who's been in politics for, oh, my God, <clears throat> as long as I can remember. And I, sure. uh, I, I, I respect him tremendously. And he always says to, to me and to everybody else that the role of government in job creation – Okay, government does not create jobs. Mm -hmm. Government creates the platform for business to create jobs. Uh, absolutely right. Okay, and, and I think that's that's one thing that our industry, infrastructure, and you know, tra whether it's transportation, water, waste, or I think that's something that we really get. Sure. You know, that's a, <clears throat> because that's you know one of the things that when you think about what we have going on here, I mean, you look at the the economic drivers in 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 our southwestern Pennsylvania region right now. The Alcassan Consent Decree Project, sure, sure. three billion dollars sure. plus or minus whatever the case may be. <clears throat> sure, Re redoing the Allegheny, the Greater Pittsburgh International Airport, another billion dollars. Sure, you know the natural gas industry, you know sure. billions of dollars. These are all infrastructure-driven opportunities. Sure, you know, and and but these came about naturally. They're not government opportunities. Is yeah, where I was sure. going with that. If you look at the immigration of the, the United States, mm -hmm. um, the forced immigration of of black people through slavery. Mm -hmm. The Mexican Americans, Mexican Americans, uh, Irish, the Italians, the, the you know everybody, the Germans, everybody will t everybody will tell you they came here to work. Yep. yep. And what they started off doing was 
construction. They started off doing infrastructure, building roads, building highways, building building steel, building building tall buildings. It's the it's the world, and the world's needs and infrastructure. You and I are aware of this. Sure, it's incredible. We need right. to build more infrastructure in the next twenty years that's been built since the beginning of time. Mm -hmm. People need clean water. They need highways. Africa needs highways. Oh yeah, the absolutely. The U.S. needs railroads. Absolutely. We've changed airports a hundred times. And everybody needs water. Everybody needs housing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. And so infrastructure is the base. Next, next to health, and feed, health, health, healthy, and feeding people. Mm -hmm. Agriculture, which is the whole story. Infrastructure. It's an important story here where we're sitting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that's still the number one industry in PA yeah, is ag, you. right? I you, I you. And in Texas too. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And and it is it is it's incredible. But I'm very optimistic because. That is an opportunity for people to break in, sure. to start anew. And what you and I have been doing uh, in working in engineering and construction mm -hmm. uh, area is helping our firms that we work with right. get the work, the right kind of work, but also partner with the communities yes. that they're doing it. So it's yep. a win-win for everybody. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. And, and, and that's one thing I picked up from you early on is, the, you know, one of the one of the most important tools that we have in our particular toolbox when we go into a city to develop business for our for our sure, firm sure. is the community piece. Yeah. OK. Everybody, when you especially children, mm -hmm. students, school age kids, if you go in and you you always said this, go in and take care of people's kids, you take care of their kids, they'll love you. And they'll, right. they'll welcome you with open arms. Sure. And that has been the situation in every place I've gone since. Yeah. You know, when you go in and talk about their kids, their ears perk up. Yeah. It's like we, we had that yesterday. You know? Yes, yes. America is in love with its children. Mm -hmm. Thank God. Nelson Mandela said the proof of the quality of any society is how it treats its children. Right. Americans want their children to do better. Every, every generation. And part of it doing better is to give them opportunity. Mm -hmm. Everybody be kept now. They all kids want to be coders. They want well right now, but they want to be as influencers. You know? <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. But 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 infrastructure development is a really good place mm -hmm. to be. Absolutely. And you and I right right now know that American kids are not engaged right. in infrastructure. They're not in the queue. Right. People from other countries are coming here with that skill set. Mm -hmm. I talked to some kids the other day about wanting to build Africa to build highways in Africa. I was talking to. 18 year olds and a guy said well why do I want to do that I said well today only only Lagos Nigeria is in the top 20 cities in population 20 million people in the yeah. world I said but by the time you're 40 there'll be six cities in Africa that size the need for roads the need for highways the need for clean water absolutely and right now American firms are lining up right worldwide firms lining up to go do mm -hmm. the work we're going to get some of the tribalism uh, so to speak the which has been, you know, human human rights issues are are, sure. are rampant some places. But but what's going to happen is it's going to happen. Everybody's going to invest. Absolutely. And in fact, you ought to think you ought to have a, in your your mindset that you can that, that you, you can help change the world. You can build a water system in Jackson, Mississippi, in Allegheny County, Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. or you can build a water system in Lagos, Nigeria. Well, and have a great future, a great life. Ab absolutely, you know? absolutely. And, you know, it, it's almost like we're coming full circle because if you think about an, another lesson I got from you is, um, is, is looking at the communities that other people look past. In mm -hmm. other words, communities of color, sure. poor communities, sure. right? Most of our, our, our brethren, our, our peers, will look past those to the money. Sure. Right. What they what that that's short sighted sure. because those communities of color, those sure. poor communities, sure. rural and urban, sure. are where investment is going. Sure. You know, D Detroit. Yes. Right. I would you and I would talk about Detroit and I'd come back and I'd mention Detroit and in, in, around here and people would go, the heck would you want to go to Detroit? I mean, Detroit's th this, that and the other. And it's like, you know, there's this image. But Detroit's coming back. Oh, I was there a few, last week. It's coming back. I, unbelievable bouncing back. Yeah. Look at some of the old neighborhoods. They're, right. They're more gentrified. Sure. They're more integrated. Integration is good. But people are building houses, restoring old houses. The city's reinventing itself. It's reinventing itself. And what young people don't realize, it will always be in the reinvention. Absolutely. Process, Absolutely. You know? And it's right sizing. It is right sizing. Do you know what I mean? Because it's sprawled here, but it's tightening that up. It's right sizing yes. the city yes. itself. Yes. And, and, and Detroit's going to thrive again. It will. And, you know, there will always be. 
how many times has Pittsburgh reinvented itself? Sure. Right? Sure. I mean, where we are now is light years from where we were 20 years ago, sure. let alone 50 or 60 years ago. One of the greatest inventions, you know, I talked about this yesterday, on earth is the university, mm -hmm. higher education. Yeah. Um, for a long time, the Catholic Church through its, through, you know, through the university, well, look, look, I'm thinking about all the, the uh, Catholic colleges in this country. Yeah. What they've done for the education mm -hmm. of, and I'm not Catholic, but think about how great the Jesuits have been. Oh my God, yeah. You know, in building, building these colleges, universities. Yeah. <clears throat> Notre Dame, okay, you can go on and on and on. Uh, Georgetown, absolutely. you know. Absolutely, right here, you know, Duquesne. Duquesne. You know, uh, I mean, it's, you it's know, amazing. You know, You're you know, absolutely you know. right. And the thing about it is, that what happens is that Pittsburgh, Cleveland, mm -hmm. with Case Western, mm -hmm. Cleveland State, Detroit, Wayne State, okay? Yep. These places have become magnets. Bright young people come. Right. They want to live there. They want to be still stay together. They're not running all over the world. And that's a great a great thing. And oh, then you know, our kids, you know, every kid doesn't have to go to college. You and I both know that. Oh, yeah. In fact, in our industry, the construction industry doesn't have to, right. have to do that. But but having access to education, they have to keep learning. That's a big thing. They have to right. keep learning. But anyway, how we turn these young people on to this industry is going to be, it's, it's more than a notion, but, but we're, but we're going to get there. Well, you know, and, and I think we will. Uh, and I think, I think it's re going to require us to go, you know, it, it's easy to say, well, let's go talk to the, the, the juniors and seniors in high school. But we need to be in middle school, if not elementary school, because kids are not the ones that do kind of get exposed a little bit to our industry. It's right. too late. They're right. already on a different path, right? Sure. Like, eh, you know, and a lot of them, you know, even the tech kids, even the kids that are that are science and technology engineering type kids, they're going into the really cool stuff, the, you know, the, the tech sure. stuff, uh, you know, sewers and water lines and bridges. It's not sexy, right? It's not that's not something that that young people are, you know, are, are really in tune to. That so, will have the more impact. I'll give me an example. New York City subway. Mm -hmm. Millions of young people ride it every day. Right. Don't even think about it. It's a trillion dollar enterprise. They don't think about what role they play in it, how yeah. to be part of it, mm -hmm. uh, to get stuff done. The amount of money that these people spend on infrastructure uh, is going to be just stunning. You know? Yeah. But, yeah. but it's, 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 it's going to get there. We have work to do, though. Sure. Uh, we need a vision. We need our leaders to have visions about this. One of the mm -hmm. things, Jim, you and I talked about is many, many, many of our political leaders have no real concept of infrastructure. Right. Right. Give an example. <clears throat> You want to have women, mothers, women, working women, really engaged in water wastewater projects. Why? Because they pay the water bills. They're the yes. rate payer. Right. They're the client. Absolutely. The client is not the city of Detroit. Absolutely. It's not. The, it's not. It's not Alcasan. The right. client is the public. Right. You know. And why not engage them? Yeah. Can you imagine turning on? Well, you know, we're talking about. You had Ashley here. Mm -hmm. You know, you had Tyler here. Come on. You know, it's brilliant to have young women engaged. There's never in been a better opportunity for young women than there is right now. Oh. I mean, it, and look at look at our clients that we deal with. Sure. How many of the major city utilities that we deal with are led by women? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, you know, I mean, just about every one we're working with right now. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. And it, it's, and, it's they, and they started in the industry that wasn't friendly to them. Absolutely. You know, absolutely. But they, but they, but and they solve problems differently. Yeah. <laughs> and better. They, they think differently. They have differently. a. They they have a, they process information differently than than men do, and that's not a sexist statement. That's yeah. a fact. Yeah, it is. One of the things that's going to happen, you know, I've talked about this infrastructure around the world. You know, so for a while, I was at Parsons Corporation. Mm -hmm. We start their water company, as you know, and then the Iraq, the shock and awe. We we tore up Iraq, and we won a contract to rebuild the water system in Baghdad. In which, Baghdad, yeah. Which is a perfectly beautiful system, mm -hmm. which was destroyed by U.S. <laughs> missiles. <clears throat> so now women who have been turning on the tap in their house mm -hmm. now had to go walk to the well to go get water. These are women right. who are trained as engineers, as doctors, sure, housewives of all kinds, to the well to get water because it's a woman's work. Yeah. So we did In some instances... Far. Yeah, they had so, to walk. So yeah. we, we did a proposal. The cover, you love the cover. The proposal had an American woman in a Walmart buying bottled water for her sports, her son's sports team. So yeah. her bag was full of all these, you know, you know, Dasani water, or whatever. Right, right. And then we had the other side of the page was a woman in Iraq, okay, in a business suit because she's a lawyer going to a well to get water in a water jug to take home. 
Right. Well, we won the contract. Okay? Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Absolutely. And we had Sarah Katz's firm. Mm -hmm. You know well. Sure. We're on business here. Um, be our our advocate. The Iraqis miraculously gave us a woman water minister. Although Jim, unfortunately, she was assassinated some years later. Really? By who, who didn't like want a woman in power? Okay. Wow. But make a long story short, we solved the problem. And whatever we built, a lot of things that was built by the U.S. government, you know, after the war was destroyed. They, 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 like they built a jail. Well, that got destroyed yeah. by you know Al Qaeda. Um, but the water system wasn't touched. Right. And I keep thinking we need more women to make more decisions mm -hmm. in, that, I agree. In, that, in that regard. I agree. Um, um, it's as important as having minorities in, in, engaged in it. I have, to laugh, I have to laugh at it. You know, uh, I won't get religious here on you, but I was spiritual on you. So it's people right. always want to bring the, that. the Christian relationship to me. I said, well, why do you think Jesus talked to the woman at the well? And people would say, well, he was letting women. I said, no, 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 no. He was at the well because women were at the well. Right. getting the water right infrastructure is very important to people mm -hmm. um, to families and 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 families need the support we need families involved in mm -hmm. decisions on infrastructure which which way the buses should go right um, one of the things when I was assistant general manager of the transit system in Los Angeles I had a deal with uh, with uh, um, a guy who now runs LA water and power Marty Adams, and he was then on the board of uh, Glendale Hospital. Okay. Well, guess what? Our bus system wasn't getting his Hispanic workers who were cleaning the hospital there mm -hmm. in time. Okay. So what we did is we made, it, we made a difference. Tom Bradley was the mayor then. He said, help him out. We changed the routes, and people were getting there on time. Getting to work on time. And getting right. home. Right. The buses didn't just end at a certain time. Right, right. Get, we had that one bus that would come through and wait for everybody, you know? Yeah. What's yeah. wrong with that? That's human. That's, that's, the that's, that's what should be done. That's, that's the way it should be done. Right? It's true. It's true. It should you know? be done. It's it, fun stuff. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, just, that's just common human decency to, to look out for one another. And I think, you know, I think we're all here to look out for each other. I think none of us is put here to take a solitary journey. No, 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 no. Right? Not We're all, all here to look out for the person next to us. No, it's true. You know, it's and, true. and it's in and out, you know, there will be people will come in and out of your life sure. and you know, have a some people much like yourself with me. You know, you you and I have been sure. good friends for a long sure. time, but I don't know that you really understand the depth of the impact you had on my life. Right? I was actually and, surprised. <laughs> because and, and, and listen, there was because, you know, I paid attention. Right. right. And so I, I was at that time I was going through a divorce. There was a lot of stuff happening in my life, a lot right. of moving parts. And so Bruce calls me in the office one day and says, this is Marvin Williams. This, this is your guy. Go with him. Do what he says. Listen to everything he says. So I did that. <laughs> right. And, uh, and I paid attention, you know, yeah. and it really I mean, that, that was a difficult time for all of us to a certain extent. Sure. But at the end of the day, taking those you know, the, the, those lessons with me. And even though we would go a year without talking to each sure. other, but whenever, you know, at the end of that year, I picked the phone up and you, you answered the phone sure. and I'd ask maybe it's just a question and, sure. you know, and, uh, but I, I'll never forget that. I'm like, and then, you know, you're a good sized fellow. You were even bigger than, right. Absolutely. So I, I come in and there's this, you're like this, this, this mountain of, of oh, a man, sure. very soft spoken. And I'm like thinking, Bruce, what the hell are you getting me into? You know, but <laughs> that was probably, the and, and I'll tell you a quick story. What you taught me, the fundamentals of business development marketing in this industry. Sure. Okay. So I left that firm and went to another one, bigger firm, the the, the biggest firm <laughs> at, at that time in in the, in the world. Sure. So they decided they were going to implement a new business development strategy across the firm. And sure. they had, I think, 60,000 employees at that particular sure. time. So they invited their senior leadership, including myself, to Washington, D.C. for three days of intensive training. Sure. Okay? And I'll see if you remember this. So they had this three-ring binder. It was at least four inches thick. Uh -huh. And so we went down and we, we, we met, and then we went back to the hotel, and it was going to start the next morning. So I'm sitting in the hotel, and I'm going through this, and I'm going – is happening here and I picked the phone up and called you right. because it was exactly what you had taught me like five <laughs> years before that and I said I don't, you know what do I do and you said just go with it just yeah. go with it so we go through the two-day thing and 
they think I'm like the greatest thing since sliced bread because I'm answered all the questions because I had been doing it from, you know, what you taught me. Yeah. And it was funny as heck. And then so they had a five hundred dollar gift certificate for the person that they would pick the guy that, and, and, and I won it. Right. And I'm like, I can't take this. I can't accept it. So I donated it to the, the part of the local team in that sure, office there. Sure. But but it was really funny. You know, and again, it's how things just stick when you don't even realize that they are. You know? One of the advantages of being African American in the times I've been alive has been that you have to survive. Right. I remember going to college. You think about talk about what I've learned. Well, here's how you learn it. You learn it because you're always thrown into a situation sure. where nobody expects you to do really well, except to play football. Okay. Yeah. Um, that's well, that's uh, true. Yeah. Um, nobody expects you, and so people don't know what you're doing. I was telling the other day, I was at a meeting in Washington D.C. for Amwa. American, okay. yeah, sure. the, the American water agencies, all the water type agencies, at a hotel where I used to be a doorman when I was in uh, <laughs> when I was in uh, high school. I was a doorman because it was four blocks from my house in yeah. Southwest D- Southwest DC, <clears throat> and so I told you it was like I was listening to people talk about about the future. And I kept thinking back. This is the same lessons we learned when I was a doorman. Nobody ever knew how smart I was. Or that I was getting ready to go to college or whatever. Right. Okay. Right. They would say things in front of me that they thought I had no awareness. How many times are we in the presence of a waitress, of a of you know guy doing the shoe shine? I don't know the shoe shine Absolutely. Barber, Absolutely. Who's got a tremendous amount of education, mm-hmm. from a tremendous amount of knowledge? And they would say things <clears throat> in front of me, and I would use that, you know, steal from it. Um, I still steal things from my. For my minister, every Sunday, I always he, he gives he does a sermon, then I'll use it in the week. I use parts of it in the week. But part of it is, we're all here. We're really Absolutely. here. We're really here. Absolutely. And, and the thing about it is, we have value. Mm-hmm. One thing I'd like to see happen. You know, I talked about this. You got to have a plan for the future. Mm-hmm. You can't plan for obsolescence. One of the things about local politics right now, about the politics right now of this nation, which people say is so divided. It isn't divided. It's divided by somebody's trying to do this to us. Here's the thing. <clears throat> you have to say, my children, you know, I talked about this, mm-hmm. and sure. your children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, mm-hmm. we want a world for them. Absolutely. All of them. That's what we're working to for. To go backward in history, those who want to go to the good old days, means that you don't want a future for them. Yeah. You want them to not be judged by the content of their character. Right. You know? That's exactly right. You want right. them to be judged by... They're Italian and they moved to the wrong mm-hmm. city. You want to be mm-hmm. judged by a college versus no college. Sure. You want to be judged by things that are... The that things are, that separate us, right? Instead of looking for the things gonna, that unite us, right. focus on the things yeah. that separate and us. And in fact, um, I had my seven and a half year old grandson in New York a few weeks ago. I told you about this. He wanted to see Phantom of the Opera before it closed. That, that in itself is amazing for a seven year old. Well, he'd heard the music and <laughs> yeah, he liked but it. That's, that's wonderful. But anyway, we were in New York two coldest days of the year. Walking all over the place. He loved the subway. He loved the music in the subway. He loved the Phantom of the Opera. He loved going to Harlem. We had some cousins in Harlem. He loved all that, all of the excitement there mm-hmm. going on. And I was saying, more children need this exposure. Sure. They need exposure just to be with grandparents and just to oh. sense the world, going fishing with them. Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> you driving halfway across the country to take your, your, your grandson, yeah. who's, who's, who's a bike, a bike, a yeah, bike the, the, phenom, yeah. to, to, to do stuff. It's really more important that we do that. Right. Watch how we talk to people. Watch how we deal with people. Mm-hmm. They, they, they have to learn from that. Well, and that's know, what's missing. You're okay? right, because education, and you know I was raised by teachers, so you know it's, it's a very important thing to me, but education does not directly equal knowledge. No. The piece that you're talking about sure. is the piece that that young people need sure. to complete knowledge sure. gathering, sure. right? So the transfer of that knowledge that doesn't you, you're not going to get that always in a classroom. No, you know, no. my dad always said that knowledge is a moving target. You got to go where it is. Absolutely. You know, it's not going to come to you. Absolutely, right? So, Absolutely. and that's what you're talking about. What you experienced with your grandson, sure, right? Sure, sure. But I want to talk for a minute. I want to go back for a minute to. Uh, to 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 the late six mid late sixties early seventies sure. because you know that was I was I was here I was a young I was younger than you I you know sure. I was coming you know getting to that sure. early teenager sure. and um, but I, I remember it and I was I was very aware of it because my parents were very aware of it and my parents sure. were very engaged right they were they were liberal people and sure. you know my mom was 
young then. My mom sure. was in her 20s, sure. right? So sure. the thing of it is, it, it's, it was such a divisive time. Uh, in our country, racially, not just racially, but sure. but class-wise, income, sure. and all these things. Sure. Do you see, because I hear this a lot, and, and I'm very interested in your perspective, do you see parallels to what we're going through today to that late 60s, early 70s Sure, period? and what it's called is disruption. Okay. Okay, we had the Vietnam, we had this, this period of the 50s, things were pretty cool, mm -hmm. but things were boiling. Remember in 1957, Eisenhower sent troops to Little Rock, Arkansas. Right. What was happening was the American dream was about equality mm -hmm. and people were not being treated equally. Right. <clears throat> and so it was boiling up. Women were getting more education. Black people were getting incredible education, but couldn't, I remember a time in a period in Waco, Texas when we couldn't try on clothes in, in, you know, in, in the stores. Yeah. So people wanted what, what was theirs. They were exposed to the world. You know, there was an old song called, how are you gonna keep them after World War I? How are you gonna keep them down on the farm after they've seen Perry? Right, right. <clears throat> a lot of soldiers that didn't come back. One Absolutely. of the things that was happening was disruption was happening mm -hmm. in the world. We were chasing the, the, the Soviets, Sputnik. So that's why we chose Kennedy over, over Nixon um, yeah. by a slim majority. The world was being disrupted, okay? Right. The, the, the communists were thinking they could go and grow and whatever. A lot of fear. So you take that fear and you, then you put it into the cities. And the cities were, were melting pots. Mm -hmm. People of color lived. I, most of those places are gone now. Where they lived was terrible. Mm -hmm. um, people move out in middle class neighborhoods, but still mm -hmm. most of the black people were locked in. Mm -hmm. um, Hispanic migration was just starting in great numbers to this country. And people wanted a, a shot. They wanted jobs. Remember, there was no equal opportunity in those days. Sure. Um, you could fire people at will. Um, you know, yeah. um, In northern cities where unions had, had, had integrated, people were working side by side. Okay. But even some of them were having different pay rates and things like nature. So disruption happened, okay? Right. And when disruption happened, the people um, who want political power blame it on other people. Right. Yes. You know, yes. it's like absolutely. You know, Lyndon Johnson, and then we had we had all the uh, riots in the streets. Okay. Yeah. Oh my God, what is this about? Black people are terrible. They're all we're giving them a, we're giving them a chance, equal opportunity to, to colleges, and look what they're doing. They're rioting in the streets. Well, we have disruption right. now. Mm -hmm. One, the internet, the the, the technical disruption, exactly which allows right. people sitting in a farmhouse, you it's know, great equalizer. in Stowe, Vermont, mm -hmm. to, to, con to connect and talk to people in Beijing, okay, to sell products across lines, okay? Yep. People got empowered by the use of, of technology, okay? Number one. And in some cases, the anonymity of it. Anonym and, and anonymity of it, yes. Women, okay, are now not just additional income, they are the critical income, mm -hmm in many, many households. Yep. And white males, um, uh, who were had the upper class, in terms of economic class, found right. themselves um, no longer in total, in total command. Right. Okay? There had yeah. to be partnerships, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, people were not gonna put up with abuse. Mm -hmm. People were not gonna put up with that. Some people, some people, some people got it and, and, moved oh, yeah. with, and moved with it. Oh yeah. You look at how we sell things on television, okay? Mm -hmm. Disruption occurred, okay? The gay and lesbian community got a chance to be to live their lives, okay, right. without right. fear. All right, yep. all this is disruption. The number of people who are going to churches, uh, certified churches, began to decline. But people are spiritual. Absolutely, they're still very spiritual. Absolutely, you know, they just don't ascribe to going to a. So disruption has happened. So what happens with disruption is people have to blame blame somebody for right. it. Right. And so, unfortunately, we got with the, the uh, after Obama. Well, Obama was disruption. Oh, absolutely. The night that he got elected, first of all, black people are 13% of the population. We only partially elected him. Most yeah. white people elected him. Okay? Absolutely. So what happens is, the night he gets elected, there are people who are saying, they ask uh, Mitch McConnell, you know, what's, what is it? He says, our job is to make sure he's a one-term president. Not to find a way to work with him. That's exactly right. That statement right. became a reality. And so what happened was you made it divisive. Yes. Everything he did that was bad. That created the division. Yeah. Everything that he did was bad, it. although we had eight years without any scandals, any scandals in the White That's House. exactly right. Um, you know, the, the Obama family, and it, you, we, I remember we, remember we were in Chicago a couple sure, of years ago. We sure, went, to, we went sure, to the house. Sure. And, uh, it, you wouldn't let me go up and knock on the door, but that's, that's okay. Sure. <laughs> but, but, you know, I heard the debate here on the ground. 
you know, well, he's as, he's just as much white as he is black. Yes. He's not the first black president. Sure, he's the first sure. biracial president. Sure. But he's not, you know, so you heard all of those things, right? Sure. And it was like the people were looking, and not just the, not just the white community, right? I mean, right. the, the, the it black a, community took me a like, long time to come on board with yes, them. Yes, yes. They, they, they were scared of it. Somebody you know? actually, a mutual friend of ours actually said, he's not black, he's Hawaiian. Right, 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 <laughs> you know, so it was right. like all these things are flying around. Sure. But, you know, the thing of it was... He never went down there. No, he never did. He played high, high ball. Absolutely, and 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 you know, and he he had every reason to. He would have been justified to he's do still, it. He's still playing above the fray. He, he, he absolutely is. Being the angry Negro wasn't going to get him anywhere. That, that's exactly he's, right. He's president of all the people. Yeah. Think about Obamacare. I have two cousins who are alive today. They got cancer treatment because of Obamacare. Right. Come on, real. But really? think about. Well, obviously, we went from one extreme to the other, right? So, oh. what? When, who in my lifetime was more presidential than Barack Obama? Oh. The way he, comp- he carries himself, the sure. way he conducts his, sure. his, went about his business. Sure. Nobody. Sure. That's the answer. Nobody. Right? <laughs> I mean, you, you know, you can look at, you know, who are the great presidents? Okay? Right. So, obviously, everybody starts with George Washington. Sure. How do we know that? Sure. Okay, how do we know that? I mean, you know, it, it, I always go back to this. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. What that should say is all men are created as long as they're white. Because that's the way way our society was from day one. Sure. Sure. Right? It's been an uphill battle ever since. Sure, sure. So, you know... I was, uh, I joke about this with, with friends of mine. There was a, there was a special on, uh, on PBS or the history, something like that. Sure. It was about presidents who served in the military. Sure. And, you know, you had Gerald Ford and Nixon, Jimmy Carter went to Annapolis and all these uh. things. Reagan, you know, and, but they didn't, uh, Bush won, you know, was a pilot. Sure. I get that. So they're going through all these things. And Ulysses S. Grant, okay, yeah, yeah, he was, you know, it sure. was, a, but when you, that conversation begins and ends with Dwight Eisenhower, right? right? The Supreme Allied Commander who sure. literally saved the free world, sure. right? Sure. So, but then, but that's how they get into these comparisons where it's... Doesn't make any sense. Yeah, you know, like, who, you know, it's, it's who was, who's, the, who's the better hitter, Henry Aaron or Barry Bonds? You know, who was... So, the, you, so you, can, you can look back in history and say, who was the better choice? By 118,000 votes, was it Kennedy or was it Nixon? It was Kennedy for that right. time. That's exactly okay. right. Given what we know about... Nixon's ethics. Yes. In hindsight, <coughs> in that, hindsight. Was, that was the right choice. <clears throat> that was the right, the right choice. He got reelected twice, uh, Nixon did, mm-hmm. by huge majorities. Yeah. But his ethical issues, we can't talk about his accomplishments almost at all, except going, going, to, to, going to China, okay? Yeah. But, yeah. But, uh, Jimmy Carter, who's now in hospice care, and we wish his family well. Absolutely. We now look True at gentleman. him. True gentleman. We look at him uh, four years as a president. Uh, we said a failed president, but my God. His quality of his life that he's lived cannot be touched by anybody. That's exactly his right. After the presidency, is unbelievable. It's unparalleled. What no, he's done nobody for comes the close. world, yeah. what he's given. Yeah. And guess what? He's the same Jimmy Carter he was yeah. when he started. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. And, and, you know, how much of that, and, and you're right, I, I think it's a little bit harsh, to, but, it, but it's generally accepted that he did ha- have a failed presidency. But, you know, largely the, the you know, the, the, the issue he had in the Middle East and, and those types of things. But none of that was of his creation. You know what I mean? And, and this is probably one of the most successful human beings that's ever lived. Okay. Quality of life. Quality of life. You're exactly Truman, right. Truman, Truman was uh, part of the old uh, boss system in Missouri, mm-hmm. um, beholden people say, to local political bosses. Democrat, never finished college. Yeah. Um, came to Washington as a Southerner, got the, the presidency job by default, came to Washington, and integrated the troops. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Integrated schools. You yeah. know? You know? Did more good for it. Go to the Truman Library sometimes, Independence, oh, Missouri. Oh, it's amazing, yes. Yeah. It's, it's, it's hard. It's rendering. He had made decisions about the atom, dropped the atom bomb. He had right. made decisions about bringing people to life. <laughs> one of the things we just got an to, average guy. One thing we've got to do, and we talk about this. We talk about women in this piece. Look, um, we missed an opportunity with Hillary, mm-hmm. and 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 I know her personally. So here's the deal: she would have been an excellent president. I listen to people's reasons about why they didn't vote for her, and she just lost by a few. She had more votes than 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 Trump, but in the wrong places. Yeah, okay, right, right, right. But why? Well, I don't like her. I don't. Want, no, it's a basic discrimination against women. It is. It is. 
I know black males, I know white males, barbershop, who I'm not gonna vote for her, I don't want women, come on, really? And, and you're right, because what was what has been highlighted as her flaws, as the things that people didn't like about her, sure, sure. would be expected, accepted in a man, mm-hmm. right? So if you had a man of equal experience, equal education, all sure. things equal across the board, those, those blemishes, warts, shortcomings, whatever they were, would have been accepted. Here's a woman that had to face the world mm-hmm. with a public humiliation oh my God. of her husband having sex in the Oval Office. Right. Kept her family together. Yeah. Which is really, you talk about spiritual life. Oh. Kept them together under against all odds. Yeah. Weathered all of the humiliation. Was a fabulous Secretary of State. Mm hmm. Should have been president. Sure. And I'm just sorry that we missed that opportunity. And we did. It was a missed opportunity. And my <clears throat> father used to echo those statements. And he voted for her. And he was he was a, a, a strongly advocated for her for, right. for the reasons that you said. Yeah. You know, I mean, it, it was unfortunate. And maybe, you know, maybe we're getting there. Maybe we're getting closer now. Um, you know, Vice President Harris is, has that was a that's a big deal, right. you know, but, to have. But, but, but maybe we're getting closer. Well, we're getting closer. We and, and I'm not saying she's the person, but sure. you know, it could be, you know, it could be somebody else. It could be uh, Nikki Haley. It could be anybody governor, that's kicking the, the around. Governor of Michigan. It could the governor of Michigan. I, I tell you, she's fab, fabulous. Yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. Well, listen, one of the things I think that also is important for us now is um, yesterday, big big thing. School districts in California, several of them, are going to be suing the internet companies, some of the country companies, Google and others, for how they, for the mental health issues mm-hmm. that they're causing for their students. I saw that, yes. I, one of the biggest things we face right now is that young people are having mental health crises. Yeah. <clears throat> and we don't know how to deal with it. And we don't know how to deal with it. All right. And we don't really know where it came from, where mm-hmm. it's coming from. We kind of know. We kind of say, well, it's being on the phone all the time and whatever. Yeah. Well, but it's more than that. That's a broad brush. Part of yeah. it is that their parents are not parenting. Yeah. Their parents are in disarray, mm-hmm. okay, are falling. The kids can't turn. They look at their parents and they, and, and they can see, you know, if my mother says, this is blue, but everybody else says it's red, I look at my mother and say, mom, it's really red, okay? The problem is we're not giving, we're not giving the kind of support that our, our, kids, yeah. our kids need. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? Because we're in disarray. So we talked about, starting about a few minutes ago, disruption. Mm-hmm. So we're in disruption period. Now, yes. let me tell you certain facts. Regardless of this period, here's what's going to happen. Um, if the world were 10 people, most of them would be Asian, like seven, seven yeah. out of the 10, okay? The world's going to grow that way. We're going to have fewer borders, real borders and mm-hmm. real divisions. Um, we're going to be in competition in the U.S. for jobs. It's going to be people all over the world. Go to Wall Street and listen to the language that's being spoken on, spoken on Wall Absolutely. Street. Absolutely. Kids in school right now in Allentown, Pennsylvania, are going to be competing with kids from Beijing. Mm-hmm. That's a fact. Not with kids from Allentown. Right. Okay? 100%. You have yep. to be educated and, or trained. Mm-hmm. I don't care if you go to college or not. Be educated or trained. You have yes. to do it and want to keep reinventing and yourself. And training is education when you, when you, okay. when you boil okay. right down to it. Yes, we I agree. Need to, we need to spend far more dollars in prenatal care in, mm-hmm. in prenatal, and in young child care. Having a head start program is is critical. It's critical. It's critical. And if we don't do it, right? Obama said this one time. He was on 60 Minutes, and he was being interviewed, and he was getting ready to go into have a press conference, and he was talking to the 60 Minute interviewer, and she said, "Look, what bothers you the most?" And Obama says, "They're going to ask me about Sarah Palin's new book." Okay. I know the questions are out there, Mm -hmm. but here's what happened. I just had to talk into the American ambassador to South Korea two minutes ago. And he was concerned because in South Korea, a big issue is the parents want English taught in kindergarten, not in second grade. Mm-hmm. Okay. He said, now watch. He went out, and sure enough, the first question was about Sarah Palin's new book. We have got to focus. We've got to focus. We've we got have to, to focus. focus. You know, Belgium. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Nobody would consider Belgium to be further advanced in the U.S. than anything, sure, sure. okay? But I have family there, and children in Belgium are exposed to four languages before they get out of what would be elementary school, sure. sixth grade. Sure. Four languages, sure. right? And they speak four languages before they even get to secondary school, yeah. right? We don't even talk language in most part until high school. Right. Maybe maybe middle school, right. but, you know, right. and that's, you're required to learn one language, Sp- Spanish or French, right? right? I mean, it's like, right. but, but... It, there are countries that we would look down on, right, that are f- more advanced than we are. Here's one, here's one advancement. I love this one. 
you know what's happening with Ron DeSantis and yeah. you know what, what you teach in schools. And you know, you and I are both students of, of African American history. Sure. Okay, African American history is so critical that all the world's great universities, I mean, Beijing, England, mm. France, the Sorbonne, Germany, South Korea, they all teach African American history. Yeah. Why? It's the economic history. It's history. history of this country. Right. People don't realize that at the, at, the, at the Civil War, the value of the slaves on the open market, which, which was being traded, mm -hmm. was worth more than the GMP of the North. Of the North. Yeah. But we don't want to teach it wise. People don't feel, white people don't feel bad. Okay? That was, in today's dollars was a multi-billion dollar industry. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, it's, absolutely. it's insane. Yeah, you and I are going to be at the Museum of African American History yes. this next week. And it's clear, people go and look at the, and look at the exhibit, and they say... Oh God, I didn't realize this, you know, built it. But more importantly is this, <clears throat> you can't, this is like Hitler burning the books. Mm -hmm. You cannot play this game. Right. They're taking books out that have gay themes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, because um, James Baldwin was gay, they want to take the fire next time uh, out of the school. Well. It's one of the great books it's of all time. It's one of the time. greatest books ever written. Uh, ever, ever, exactly ever, ever, right. ever written, okay? You're exactly okay. What right. are you going to do? Yeah. You're going to find out that Shakespeare <clears throat> uh, had, had a transgender son, and therefore we're not going to read yeah. it anymore. I mean, you know, the, the, it, the, it, it's crazy what we've become, Marvin. Yeah. It really We is. need more knowledge, not yes. less knowledge. And okay? we, have to, we have to, we need, we need truthful sure. history education. Sure. You know, <clears throat> and I've mentioned this to you. Sure. I had heard the term Black Wall Street when I was a little kid. I remember the first time Tulsa, hearing Oklahoma. that. Tulsa, Oklahoma. My dad taught that. Sure. He taught that. When, you know, and now here we are. You know, he retired from teaching in 1981. And here we are still, still debating about I, teaching I, that I, in class. Funny story. I don't know if you remember. And this is where uh, 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 Trump had a, had a thing he was doing in Tulsa. And it was being on the same day as the Tulsa riots, the anniversary. And he didn't know why he shouldn't go there. Yeah, so somebody yeah, told it, him, <clears throat> right. oh yeah, we changed it, okay? Right. But the point is, the Tulsa, the Black Wall Street, is one of many, many examples of things mm -hmm. that have happened. Sure. In the museum, there are little plaques, Museum of African American History mm -hmm. and Culture at Smithsonian, there are little plaques all over names. Somebody asked me two weeks ago, what, who are those names? Those are over 4,000 people of color who got lynched for which there was never any justice. Oh, yeah, it's okay. it's insane. And you know, people people would know the name Emmett Till, right? right? Because that has gotten a lot of Play, publicity yeah, because yeah. that was, you know, but you're right. There's over 4,000 people that you, you just are, are forgotten. Yeah. Are literally forgotten yeah, yeah. about and you know, I one of the one of the my favorite movies um, was um, was it Mississippi Burning with Gene yeah, Hackman? Sure. Okay. I mean, it was loosely based in a true sure, story, sure. right? But the the power of that film, even though it was entertainment and it was right. largely fictional, sure. was I mean, you literally could feel Mississippi in that time. You sure. could get you could feel that in that movie. It was that realistic. Sure. And you know, again, I I remember the activism of my parents at right. that time, you know, because it wasn't widely ex ex accepted. You know what I mean? I, you know, I, I, white I, folks just didn't do that. Here's one thing I got. As an African-American, I got to tell you this, Jim. It's not true at Penn State, okay? okay? <clears throat> or at Pitt, even. When you watch the Southern schools play football, Division I football, yeah. you have this football team, which is mostly black. Then they show the band, <laughs> and they show the cheerleaders. <laughs> And it's oxymoron. The cheerleaders are all these white women. I, nothing wrong. I want these girls to have Mostly scholarships. Mostly blonde. Mostly blonde. Okay, okay, yeah, okay. That's okay, true, okay. I keep saying, so what are we telling our children? Right. What are we telling? What are we 100 telling? 100% correct. What are we telling You're our right. children? You're right. <laughs> yeah. And you know, like well, we've talked about, we're sure. both high school football sure. guys. Sure. And, you know, I have a, one of the grandsons sure. is, is a freshman this year. Sure. And it was blessed to be on a team that won sure. a state championship. We should, we should tell everybody right? that I give you the high school, my high school score. Yeah. <laughs> and you give me your, every Friday night, every we, we Friday trade night. high school scores. Yeah. Okay. And, and you, well, you come from, you know, South Lake right. is, is, that's one of the legendary national programs. Absolutely. And Bell Vernon, which has always been a good program. You know, obviously, you know, this is the cradle of quarterbacks, sure, sure. you know, Joe Montana, Dan sure. Marino, Joe Nader. I love your championship bit. game this year. Oh, but, hey, listen, those young fellas, you know, they, they started the year 
there was a they juggled classifications right, and right. they came out of the gate and lost two games and everybody's ah, they were overrated because they went to the championship game last sure, year before. sure sure but those kids in that locker room the kids that they needed to lead started to lead and they came together and that's and it what was it's fun about to watch, that's what it's about right? for the kids for the future and we we is quentin martin who, who the, the sure. five-star athlete from here sure. who's uh, probably as highly recruited as anybody from this part of the world and sure. at least in my lifetime sure. and uh he's the number two rated athlete in the country sure but he was on a podcast and i know his family very well and again he uh you know he, he played my, my grandson was on that team and just to get his He's very articulate, very sure, soft-spoken, sure, very sure. thoughtful and respectful. Sure. And, uh, you know, I tell people that, and people are so jaded. They say, well, that, that was an act. He's been coached. He's 16 years old. Sure. Okay? Sure. But when you think about white kids from here, uh -huh. okay, unless you're a lineman, unless you're, you know, you just don't. Or a quarterback, right. you just don't think that Notre Dame or Michigan or Alabama right. are within reach, sure. right? You've got to be a five-star kid like Quentin Martin, sure. okay, sure. to even have a shot there, and and that's the, that's this, that's disappointing to me. South Lake, right? which is as you said, was number one in the country for several years, um, has a policy that if you come out <clears> with the team, you 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 play. I love it when we get far enough in advance that every kid plays. Yeah, right. Okay, right. okay. If you come out, you can be there four years. You can be on the team. Mm -hmm. I like the situation with inclusion. You know, I, like, I like kids to be included. Oh, absolutely. As many opportunities to lead as possible. Right. That's part of it, of what, what high school, I think, really really should be about. Oh, I think so. I you know, agree. Really, really about. I love it. I love it. But we talked about, you know, I've been talking about the kids, and that is really the future of this country. Absolutely. Young people think differently than we do about it. They don't have the racial hangups that we do. No, no, uh, no. Um, and they have to be taught. Where it is, they have to be taught that there's some kind of mm -hmm. some, some kind of issue. Um, there's a line Sidney Poitier, uh, and the guest is coming to dinner, tells his dad, you think of yourself as a colored man. I think of myself as a man. And not mm -hmm. until everybody in generation is gone and dead will we get off my back. Now, then he tells his father he loves him. You yeah, know? sure, sure, okay, sure. Great but, movie. But... The point is, and I'm afraid we're part of that generation. I, at least I am. You know, <laughs> it may have to take our generation leaving here mm -hmm. to give these kids a chance to have the world they really live in. Uh, it's entirely possible. All of, I all agree. Of, all of my grandchildren, except one, are mixed race. Mm -hmm. They they live in a real world. Okay, mm -hmm. they actually identify most of them as black kids. Mm -hmm. Sure. Because that that's a that's a ev evident in their, their lives. But more importantly, they're friends. I went to a p grandparents' day at. Uh, my son West's school, grandson West's school. I couldn't tell who the, who was whose grandparents. Yeah, you know, and that yeah. was what you want. You and that's beautiful. That's and, a beautiful it's, thing. It's a beautiful thing. There's nothing wrong with whites marrying whites, blacks marrying blacks. It's not, not an issue. All. Not at all. But the point is, we want to have quality. You, I know what you want for your children. I want for my children. Same I thing. want spouses that are committed right. to growing family, to have similar kind of values. That's that, exactly that, right. That kind of thing. But Jim, as we before we wind up here, it was the bottom line for us in infrastructure. We want to give advertisement to the world. Mm -hmm. Young people, there are so many jobs, so much positive life. Right. If, you right. want, if you want to work outdoors all your life, if you want to work with things that 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 move in about grow things, yeah, come to infrastructure. It's you know we need you in construction of all kinds. It's, it's a great career. We need it, you in supply. It, we need you in the trucking. We need you in engineering. We need you in architecture. There's so we many. We need you in the financing so of things, it. Right. There's so many things. <laughs> the legal side that of touch it. it. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and you can grow. You can grow communities. You know. Right. I right. wanted. Um, um, uh, I wanted the firm that that you and I worked with before a while, a long time there, to have as their motto that we help build communities. We partner with communities to help build them yes. one at a time. One at a time. And, and that's what it's all about. And that's, sure. how, that's how I've tried to, to, to move forward in my career. And, and you know, what, what I would say to young people, in, not just infrastructure career, but in anything, sure. if you're willing to work, you can be anything you want to be. Sure. You know, we're sitting here now. It, take the old law degree out of it, right? Sure. You and I have been doing this for almost 100 years combined. That's absolutely right. And neither one of us is an engineer. That's true. true. By, by education. Sure. Right? Sure. And we've, we've reached the top of our profession. We've sure. both been very successful sure. in what we do, but we've succeeded 
in a field where we actually shouldn't have on paper. Sure. Right. Our so, interest, our interest brought us there. Exactly. And so our ability if, to learn. If you're willing, if you're willing to keep an open mind and sure. put in the work, you sure. can be anything you want to be. That's true. You know. That's so I, I, before we go, I want to ask you a couple of quick questions. We're both jazz guys. We're both sure. jazz aficionados. Sure. So, who is on your Mount Rushmore of jazz musicians? Ha. Huh. Well. <laughs> <laughs> I thought about this last night because after I well, dropped you off. Well, okay, two things. One, as a composer, Quincy Jones. Yes, yes. People have no idea, no idea how much jazz he's composed. Right. There's this picture of him in Duke Ellington. Uh, I, I mean, as a composer, mm -hmm. okay. Uh, Miles Davis, mm -hmm. when I was in college, I told you the story. We were in a student group at Wesleyan. And we were the warm-up act for Miles Davis, <laughs> so I can only tell you. But I got to sit behind. I got I got to sit behind the stage, and watch him do it. Yeah. And I realized what a pure genius it was. Oh my God! Yeah. He wasn't high on anything. He just was playing. But then you know, here's the thing you'll like: modern jazz quartet. Oh, cool Chicago jazz. Just oh yeah. You know, yeah. Now you're in Pittsburgh. You had so many jazz clubs in Pittsburgh. Oh my God! Yeah, my you know? dad was a regular at Walt Harper's attic. I mean, it was like it was like a done deal. Every act he would he sure. would go there and and sure. you know. Okay, so so there's three. Who's the fourth? And, and the fourth would be. I'm just thinking of. Uh, uh, we asked about musicians. I was thinking of singing. I was thinking of. Uh, Oh gosh, let me think of who I think. Well, Sarah Vaughn. Sarah Vaughn. Sarah Vaughn, I think a lot. Yeah. Really, really. Uh, and then she's not a jazz singer, but I was 21 years old. I told everybody it was my favorite. I was deeply, deeply committed and in love with Nancy Wilson. That was just going to, that's where I was going. Listen, my father I was committed. loved her, and that was like the, the, the first jazz singer I was exposed to as a kid, right? And so mine, mine, very much the same. I, who, who, who are yours? I would say, well, well I would, I, w I would say Quincy Jones, Miles Davis, and it, it, it's, it's probably, I, I really like Dave Brubeck. Oh, and absolutely. the Dave Brubeck, absolutely. okay, absolutely. Um, I think Take Five is one of the great jazz songs of all time. Everybody in the right? world. Every, as soon as that starts, everybody yeah, knows yeah, what that. Yeah. Is. Even if you're not a jazz person, yeah. you know what that is. Yeah, sure. And. And I listen. I would probably put Coltrane in there. Oh, absolutely. Because he's done some. I, I've really started to listen to him. And you know, when when you go most jazz you know stations, right. you're gonna get you're gonna get Miles Davis. You're gonna get Coltrane. Right. You're gonna get Sonny right. Rollins. You're gonna get you know right. the usual suspects. Right. But you're the one that turned me on really to paying attention to Quincy Jones. Oh, right. I'm quite, because you got to do that Netflix one on Quincy yeah, Jones. Yeah, that's exactly right. And. Uh, you know, and and I, I, Nancy Wilson, that was that was yeah, that was that was the, the yeah, the, she was the Absol ultimate. Yeah, the the ultimate. Yeah. One thing I was thinking about as we were talking about uh, <clears throat> about jazz, where music is gone. Mm -hmm. You know, that the musicians of, of all the periods understand each other, they yeah. respect each other. Somebody was asking Jay Z the other day about something, mm -hmm. and Jay Z started. It's uh, a brilliant kid, uh, by do, the way. Do, doing a rift. From the back, the backup band at Motown, uh -huh. those guys have a there's a PBS show on them. Yeah, they were jazz musicians of the highest right. order, and they could play anything. Now they were re they were they were reduced to doing you know the bebop stuff. <laughs> yeah. I have a I have a grandson who's uh, how old is he now? Almost three, almost two, and I do the uh, bass tune for I Want You Back. I go yeah, yeah. boom. Boom ba dum boom, boom ba dum boom, boom boom boom, boom boom boom. Now that's I want you back from Jackson Five. Yeah, he loves it. Oh yeah, he's singing yeah. to me. He say boom. You know? I've always done that with my kids and my grandkids. Is I, I used to sing Motown songs to them. But and you know what happened to me once? And this is this is sure. a little bit off of jazz. Sure. But I was traveling to Missouri. Right. And I was at the you know Sirius sure. XM radio, and I, I I came on to this. It was a it was a tribute to Stevie Wonder. Sure. And you know. Stevie Wonder in the 70s was, was sure. really cool, songs in the key of life and all that. But I, until I spent that hour, till man's a freaking genius. Yeah. I mean, there, there's, there's so much more to Stevie Wonder than, than the pop songs, that, the hits sure. that he was, you, you know what I mean? Unbelievable. Oh, my God. He, and, and, and he wrote songs that he never recorded that other artists had hits with. Absolutely. Did not know that. And, and I've always been, my parents were music people. They were, sure. There was always music at my house. Sure. My dad was jazz and blue. My mother was, you know, was the, was the hippie chick in the 60s, you know. So, sure. so I grew up with that. And that's probably something that most people don't know about me is that I'm really, 
really a music person. I'm really, oh, yeah. really into yeah. it. I feel it a lot. You I know? remember telling somebody the other day, my roommate from college, was talking to me, and I was talking about where I was when I first heard Elton John, your song. Yeah. And I remember in college, and how it was just it was spring day, and it just it lightened yeah. up, you know. Yeah. Or the Righteous Brothers singing "You Lost the Love and Feeling" when right. I was in when I was in high school. There's just songs. I'll never forget when the Beatles first came, um, and and I was not a huge Beatles fan in the beginning, but by the time, yeah. And then I never really appreciated the Rolling Stones. Mick Jagger. What is he, 75, 76 years old? He's almost 80, probably. 80 years old? Well, I just saw Bruce Springsteen. He's 73. Marvin, he came out, Penn State, 16,000 people, played three solid hours without a break at 73. (laughs) I said, you're 74. I said, you know, but you know know what what amazes me is is how, you know, you'll hear a song on the radio, and it'll take you back to a specific place. Sure. Decades ago, and you can remember exactly what you were doing. Now, here's one for you. Hamilton, which is number one mm-hmm. play on yeah, Broadway. Sure. Five and six and seven-year-olds can sing the right. songs from Hamilton. Right. I saw that Hamilton, amazing. I saw Hamilton with 10 top, the Smithsonian board meeting, we went to Hamilton and with 10 top uh, people, uh, 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 McDonald, you know, people, McCullough, yeah. um, Dor- Doris Kearns Goodwin. Yeah, historians. Right. They got all the history, and it was all done in rap. And kids will sing, "I got to get my shot." And so, what I want to say to leave you with is that song, "I Got to Take My Shot." It was like Hamilton, who was a, you know illegitimate kid, yeah. probably half black. Who knows? You know, <laughs> yeah, you know, exactly coming to make it in this world. America gave him opportunity. Yeah. And I'm gonna take my shot. Kids can sing that now. Mm-hmm. Um, and all I'm saying to you is, we want kids. You and I want young kids to take their shot. Absolutely. Absolutely. Want to take this shot and, and and look at our industry as a real opportunity for that shot. Yep, absolutely. You know? I think I, I can't agree with that more. I think that and you know there are people out there like you and I, sure. right? Like Julius Cha Cha, sure, our, sure, our, sure, our good sure, friend, sure. that are ready and able and willing to mentor these young people. You know, sure. and, and to, to share, transfer the knowledge that we've gained over sure. 30, 40, 50 years in sure. the business, sure. and and help them to grow and to grow quickly. Can you imagine uh, Tyler? Tyler Watts, yeah. Tyler Watts, rebuilding Pittsburgh. Absolutely, a city kid. From, oh. I mean, what a great story. Okay. I mean, can you geez. can you imagine Ashley? Yeah. You know, running the business. Absolutely, absolutely. There's no. You know, <laughs> when you see that kid, you've seen her. When you see that young lady in Cleveland, I mean, right. she's a she's a she's a Ohio kid, sure. Cleveland kid, sure. basically Perry. You know, but when you see her. And the pride she has sure. in representing her firm and going into the city and realizing that she can make a difference. That's right. That's she right. can make a difference. Tyler's the same way. Sure. Tyler grew up in the city. She's a city kid. You know, she's and she loves the construction side of our business, the building. I mean, what an opportunity to, to build your hometown. And actually, to, and actually, I don't want to give her anything away, but I can see Tyler having a major construction company. Just building housing all over the world. Oh my God, yeah! In every every city we've gone to, we, yeah. we had this conversation with Valerie McCall yesterday. Sure. What's what's what is it? In, it's always in the top three. Maybe not first, but it's always in the top three. Is housing? Sure. Affordable housing, equitable housing. Sure. That is a still a major issue in every city. Sure. So thank right? you for inviting me. To, no, to thank talk you. With this was been we, great. We, we, did, we just got started on this, but but we'll <laughs> we'll, we'll we will re re, re, re circle. Absolutely. We'll recircle. I thank appreciate you. everything, my friend. Good talking to you. Okay. You too. All right. Take care.